Honour for me to speak to my homeland today, so thank you. But it's a particular honour to be at the New, New South Wales Numeracy Conference, and I want to talk about numeracy head on today. So I'd like to talk about weird English and weird numbers today. Now, the first thing to note the word weird is weird. Have you noticed its spelling? Isn't it meant to be I before E except up to C? The spelling of weird is weird. Ha! Huh. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. All right, so that's the theme today. Let's talk about numbers, how we think about and write numbers, and how weird it all actually is, and try to make sense of it all. Okay, so let's start with a number. Let's start with a fairly big one, like 273. So let's, let's think about what I just literally said then. I said 200, this is how we say this number, 273. Now, there's a big thing in the US, you don't say the word and anymore, apparently. I don't know what happens in, happening in Australia right now. But we literally say 270. TY, that's short for 10 in English, 3. So the picture that might go with that is, I can draw some boxes, one box for the units, the ones, one box for the tens, one box for the hundreds, one for the thousands, ten thousands, as many as I need, going off to the left. And I'm literally saying, when I say 273, please take two hundreds, two of those. Great, seven T, seven tens. Yep, seven of these, and three, three ones. So there is a visual representation of the number 100, 273, and we really think about tens and powers of tens, 10 squared, 10 cubed, and so forth. So we have a base 10 system, how we think about and write and visualize numbers. So here's my very first question. Why the number 10? Why are we humans obsessed with the number 10 on matters of arithmetic and counting? What's going on there? Who chose the number 10? Well, we humans did, probably because of this. We humans are born with 10 digits on two hands, so we naturally look at these all the time in our lives and think, hey, these are great to count on. So we naturally associate the number 10 with counting. In fact, think about it. We even call each of these individual things digits. These are fingers, these are, these are thumbs, but everything, we call them digits. And what do we call individual numbers? We call them digits as well. It's not a coincidence. We are so locked into our human physiology. So we've gone base 10 because of this. So I happen to know that Martians only have two hands with three fingers per hand. They think we humans are weird. Why would you go with the number 10 for counting? Six is a much more natural number for counting. So Martians go base six. So because of our humanists, we went with base 10 and write all our numbers in terms of ones, tens, and powers of tens. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So I do need to point something out. Some cultures on this planet didn't go base 10. They actually went base 20. Why? Why would some cultures think that 20 is a natural number for counting? You think about it for a while, think about it, why 20? Where's that coming from? And you realize, oh, us humans. These cultures must be thinking of fingers and toes. So some cultures actually went base 20. In fact, we have vestiges of base 20 still to this day. Now, I'm in the US, and I happen to know there's a very famous US president by the name of Abraham Lincoln, who gave a very famous talk in the 1840-somethings. It's called the Gettysburg Address, and it begins this way. He starts his speech off with four score and seven years ago, seven years ago, and then he goes on and on and on. All right, bad handwriting, but there it is, four score and seven years ago. And my question is, ooh, how many years ago is that actually? What number is he talking about? Four score and seven years ago. And you think about it for a while and you realize, oh, score is actually an old word for 20. So Abraham Lincoln's actually speaking a little bit of base 20 right there. He's saying four 20s, four score and seven years ago. He's saying 87 years ago, he spoke base 20. In fact, in fact, how do you say that number 87 in French or Francais? Now, I don't speak French, but if you know a little bit of something, you might say, oh, the French say quatre va set. Literally, word for word, quatre va, four twenties, four twenties, set, and seven. So there's a little bit of base 20 still in French. Whoa, whoa. Um, I need to point out something else. Some cultures actually went, oh my God, I don't need this anymore. Some cultures actually went base 12. They said 12 is a very natural number for us humans to count with. 12? Where does that come with? Come, come from? So you think about that one for a long while, and then you realize, actually, actually, you still see this today. Many cultures realize there's a very natural and obvious way, well, not obvious, I guess, very natural way for us humans to count to 12 on one hand. We have these four very long fingers, naturally broken into three sections each, and a very natural pointer. And you see this in parts of India and Southeast Asia to this day. So that maybe some of your students even count this way. They count as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That was one group of 12. I'll do another one. 13, 40, 15, 16, 17, no, 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 no. Second group of 12. In fact, actually, if you use both hands, you can count up to 144 on two hands this way. But you often see people in, in those parts of the world and other parts of the world to count to 12 on one hand. So some cultures actually went base 12. 
And we see vestiges of base 12 still today in our Western culture. In fact, how many, uh, how many inches are in a foot? Why, it's 12. How many uh, days in an hour? Now, how many hours in a day? Say that the way around. Oh, oh, think about this. There are actually 12 hours in a literal day. Remember, the very first clocks around the place were actually sundials. People did not bother measuring time at night because they couldn't. Sundials don't work at night. So people divided the day, well, actually it was the ancient Egyptians. They divided the day into 10 hours, but they had these two fuzzy twilight hours, one at sunrise, one at sunset. So they actually made it 12 hours in a day. 12 hours in a day, beautiful. Um, okay, how many items in a dozen? 12. So we see 12 all over the place to this day. Oh, there's 12 again. I wrote 12 twice. Okay, grand, 12 twice. I mean it. 12 is an important number. In fact, it often comes up in matters of, of uh, weights and measures. Okay, why? why? Why would it often come up in like everyday life? It comes up a lot. Because in everyday life, you often want to measure not the full thing. You only want, maybe you want to say half of the thing. Maybe you only want a third of a bag of flour when you're out in the market. Maybe you only want a quarter of a loaf of bread. These are very common everyday fractions. And for 12, they are really nice. If I'm thinking of dozen, this is why often things in the markets come in dozens, because if I want, say, half a dozen, that's a really nice number. Half a dozen is this. There's a half a dozen eggs, it's a whole number, six eggs. Or if I want a third of a dozen, no worries. There's a nice whole number, four eggs. I can do a third. And a quarter of a dozen is three eggs. Three eggs is perfect. So actually, for everyday common fractions that come up all the time in everyday life, 12 is a very friendly number. 10, on the other hand, is actually really awkward in practical everyday life. Sure, half a 10 is nice, it's a good whole number 5, but a quarter of a 10 is ugly, and a third of a 10 is ugh, down and right nasty. Ugh, ugh, ugh. So often, people went 12, because in everyday matters of weights, measures, and trade, and all that sort of stuff, with the common fractions come up, 12 is a really good number. All right, all right, so okay. But we in our Western culture today have actually gone with base 10, so let me stick with base 10 for a while. Though, I need to point something else out. English is weird. Look at this. I started writing out the actual names of the first few numbers, and you look at this and you say, okay, we use a base 10 system, so we use these things here, great. But actually, look, we've got special words for the first 12 numbers. they all got their own special name for the first 12 of them. So there's a little bit of 12-ness in how we even just say numbers, special names. Then we fall into system 13, 14, 15, 16. So the first 12 numbers, excuse me, have their own special names before we get systematic. So there's a little bit of 12-ness even in the names of our numbers. But actually there's also a little bit of 20-ness in our numbers because look, we go for special words for all the numbers 1 up to 12, then we fall into system 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and then we change system. We, we never use a word like teen before. Now we get very systematic after 20, we go 21, 22, 23, 31, 41, 51, 52, 53, 61. We go to a different system after that. So our English way of even just saying numbers, we use base 10 and how we think about right numbers like 273, has special words for the first 12 of them because we're obsessed with 12-ness for everyday life. We actually got a bit of 20-ness going on because we have a system that's sort of unique up to 20 and then we change to a whole new systematic method of naming numbers thereafter beyond 20. We've got 10, 12 and 20-ness going on in our own English words right now. How you learn English as a second language, how you make sense of this, I do not know. But there it is. English is weird. Look at that. But it's all very human. Tenness, twelveness, and twentiness. Kind of there. Kind of there. Whoa. All right. But English is extra weird. Let me, let me show what's really going on. It gets worse. It gets worse. So I started with 273. 273. And that middle number there, this middle digit is 7t, 7t, the name 7, tens, great. And you look at say 263, that one's fine as well, that middle digit is 60, 6 tens. And then English is just weird. I should be saying 205t3, 5t, I can read my handwriting, 205t3, we don't. English says no, 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 please change the word to 50. Okay, so we changed the name there, why? I don't know. Uh, what about 243? Well, that one sounds right. 243. But no, no, don't write 40 as you expect to write it. Drop the U all of a sudden. 
Okay, what about this one? 233 is what we should say. We say, no, 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 you don't say 3T. No one says 3T, you say 30. What about two? this one? 223, 20. You don't say 2T, we should say 2T, but we don't. In fact, it gets even worse now, I'm gonna keep going. 213, we should be saying 213 and we don't, but we say this, 213. And think about it, that one is actually extra weird. Because if I drew that picture in my little base 10 uh, dots and boxes system, what I'm literally saying is, okay, here it goes. Two hundreds, uh, there are no tens, I mentioned none of them, and 13. I am literally saying this, 213, uh, 13. Whoa, that's weird. So you can have 13 dots in a box. Most people say you can't have a digit of more than 10, or 10 even. Because people like to say, no, 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 you'll never do this in maths. Have 10 digits in a box. Because if you had 10 digits in a box, you say, well, hang on, hang on. 10 ones is really the same as, get rid of these, kaboom, they can explode away. They'll be the same as 110. And 10 of these, you say, no, no, you'll never have 10 tens, don't be silly. Kaboom, they can disappear and be replaced by 10 tens as 100. We always say we want to, what, what's the word there? Uh, borrow, carry, I don't know what the words are. Whatever the words are, 10 tens is really one of those, 10 hundreds is really a thousand, 10 thousand is really a 10 thousand. Never put more than 10 dots in a box. Yet, yet, we actually say the number 213. 200 and, whoops, no, no, no well, dots there, and 13. English is being fickle right now. So technically, I should go, okay, 10 of these, kaboom, getting smudgy, is really the same as 110, I should be saying 213, which is what we write with our digits, but it's not what we say with our words. Numeracy is hard because English is mighty weird. All right, so it sounds like English is allowing me to put more than 10 dots in a box sometimes, but I don't think English will ever let me do this, even though it lets me do it sometimes, like 212 T3 or 211 T3. I mean, I said the right things, 212 T3, literally I said the right thing, two hundreds, two of these, there's the hundreds, 12 tens, 12 T, I'm saying the correct thing, and three. People say, James, you're being a silly, that's ridiculous. So you let me put more than 10 dots over here, but you won't let me put more than 10 dots there. So people say, no, no, you must, you must actually explode away 10 of these dots, 10 of these tens, uh, one, two, three, four, six, kaboom, disappear, and actually is one of these. So you really should say that's what, 302 T3, 302 T3. Oh, except English is so demanding, don't say 2T, don't be silly, you have to say 20, 323. And 2113 would be the same as 300 and, oh, 13. Back to this issue again. Oh, how has anyone mastered this? I do not know, it is very, Weird, it's weird. Okay, okay, so English does every now and then let me do quirky things. In fact, let's make it even worse. Look how weird English is. Getting even worse. Try saying and thinking about this number. I'm gonna go up to the thousands this time. So I've got the tens, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. And I want 12 of those, please, and 12 of those, please, and 12 of those, please, and 12 of those. So I won't, I won't bother drawing dots, I'm getting tired of dots, but I want this number, 12 thousands, 12 hundreds, 12 tens, and 12 ones. And okay, do you know what? I can actually say that number. So I'm gonna say it out loud and just listen to how it lands in our ears. 12,212 T12. 12,212 T12. Do you know what? Only one of those things sounded strange to my ear. Do we say the word 12,000? We say it a lot. We do allow ourselves to say 12,000. Do we say 1,200 sometimes? You bet we do. We often say 1,200. We allow ourselves to say that sometimes. 12T? No way. You would never say 12T. That's just absurd, Tatton. Don't ever say 12T. Then I said and 12. We often say and 12. So actually, we say that, we say that, we think it's absurd, and we say that. Society is completely fickle. I can say more than 10 dots on a box sometimes, but not this time, not there. Why? Random, weird, beautiful history of English. Whoa, though I do need to point something out. It's all societal, 12T. 
400, 500 years ago in Old English, they did have a word, the equivalent of 12T. It meant 12 tens. It actually meant the number 120. Back in those days, they had a special word for 11T. They actually did say 11T, or the equivalent of that, meaning 11 tens, 110. So you want 110 or something, they, could, they would say 11 of them, please. So that was allowed at one point in the English language, and now it's considered strange and absurd. So all these hard and fast rules about how we write numbers in English are just societal conventions, and they're just all over the place and beautifully weird. But, but, if society is willing to get playful with how many dots you put in a box, then I say, let's go with it. Let's run with it. Let's actually make all the standard algorithms for arithmetic so much simpler and easier by actually allowing ourselves to say 12,000, 1,200, 12 on occasion. And then we can fix up for society later on. For example, for example, I mean, let's go back to primary school. In fact, this will help a lot. I wish we did teach primary school maths this way. In fact, we can teach it, I wish we could teach the whole society this, with this way now to do maths. Suppose I wanted something like a 478 plus, I don't know, 154. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, if I did this, what I'm really saying is, okay, I've got this picture, 400s, 400s, 710, 70, yep, and 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Please add one more 100, no worries. Add five more 10s, you bet I can add four, five more 10s. Please add four more 1s, piece of cake, there's four more 1s. So I've got 4 plus 1 is 5, 7 plus 5 is 12, 8 plus 4 is 12. Yes, I've got 500s, 12 10s, and 12 1s. 512 T 12. There it is, absolutely valid, fine answer. Actually, as a professional mathematician, I give my stamp of approval to that. That is fine mathematically. There's nothing mathematically wrong with that answer. It's solid, it's correct, it's beautiful. 512 to 12. In fact, you notice, I went left to right. Four plus one is five. Seven plus five is 12. Eight plus four is 12. Left to right, just as I was taught to read. In fact, back in my days in the 1970s, going through my school curriculum in Australia, I was very confused by how I was being taught to read left to right in every class Except maths class. Maths, they always manage to go right to left. Why? I don't know. You just go right to left in maths class. So apparently 8 plus 4 is 12, 7 plus 5 is 12, 4 plus 1 is 5. Same answer. What's the difference? What's the difference? Well, of course, what we don't like about this one is that the uh, that society thinks 512 to 12 just sounds abhorrent to our ears. It's wrong. It's silly. That's absurd. So the question now is, how could I fix that answer for society's sake? All right. It's a societal demand. Math has no problems with this. Maths is fine with this. It's just fixing up for society. So you say, okay, well, okay. Yeah, we've got 10 dots here and 10 dots here. Let's do like an explosion, because 10 ones is a 10, and 10 is a 100. We can actually justify this. So example, these 10 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, disappear. Kaboom, because 10 tens there is really the same as one dot there. So the answer is really 602 T12. 602 T12. Correct, solid, fine, stamp of approval as a mathematician. Still no trouble with that, that answer. The society still doesn't like it, so do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is really equivalent to 1 over here. So the answer is 3 and 2. 603 T2. Beautiful. The society wants me to say 32. 632. Great, great, great. Now, of course, the standard algorithm I was taught back in my day, back in year, I don't know what year it was, was to go right to left, say 8 plus 4 is 12, but don't dare write 12 there. You meant to... Carry? It must be carry. Is it carry the word? I, I don't know what the word is. You say, no, no, don't write 12 there because actually 10 of these can explode, if you like. 12, 10 of these can leave two behind, or two behind, and make an extra dot over there. Now, 1 plus 7 plus 5 is actually 13. Feel free to write 13 there, no worries, but we don't. No, 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 no. If you had 10 explode away, you'll leave three behind, an extra dot there, bingo. So actually what I was taught going right to left was exactly this method. Just go right to left and do those explosions, those carries as you go along. I still, to this day, personally like to go left to right as I was taught to read and just do all the explosions, the carries at the end. It's just a style thing. It's just style. There's nothing, nothing set in stone on this. It's just a, whatever suits your style the best. Love it, love it, love it. In fact, you know, I, I won't go too far in the story because if you really want to see the story, I'll put a website up to go further with it. It's something called Exploding Dots. It goes very deeply into this, not just, you know, primary school maths into high school maths and, and university maths and re open research territory. But you can do things like, I don't know, multiplication. Here's a very little simple multiplication problem. Well, is it simple? Well, it is. If you don't care what society thinks of your answer, it's a very good, very obvious answer. Because what I'm being asked to do here is to take... 2,700s, 8 tenths, and 4, and please just triple everything. 
And logic just says, oh, well, I've got 2,000s, and I say to triple them, I guess I'll have 6,000s. If I have 700s, so I'm asked to triple them, great, that makes them 2,100s. 8 10s tripled would be 24 tens, and 4 tripled would be 12 ones. So I guess the answer is 6,000, 2,100, 20, 40, 12. Done, beautiful, end of story. So now the question is, how would you fix that for society's sake? Because I, I don't think society's happy with me for that answer. And you say, okay, well, I guess uh, 10 dots here and 10 dots here each explode, leaving four here behind and extra two dots over yonder, 6,240, 12, and off you go and you can fix that up. Absolutely love it. All right, grand, grand. So there's a little piece of numeracy and actually thinking of place value this way as it actually is and being very aware of how demanding society is and fickle it is and letting go of that fickleness and just go with the quirkiness can actually unlock the doors of understanding place value. Place value is one of humankind's greatest achievements of all time and we give it short change of the cricket. We should really dwell on it and really play with it because actually it's mighty fun. So let me carry on with the story of weird English and weird numbers but let me clean the board a bit and I'll be right back in a moment.